So thank you for joining me in, in today's session uh, on supply chain management. And today we are going to focus on the inventory management portion. So chapter 12 of the supply chain management um, area. And as we're going through this, um, if you have any questions, please, please put them within the chat box. I will have to check those chats after the presentation as once I'm presenting, I'm unable to review the chat. So again, if you have any questions throughout the discussion, just please put them in the chat box and then I will address them at the end of our discussion. So as we talk about inventory management, Inventory management is a very important piece to operations management. It is a very important piece to supply chain management. And we have seen the importance of inventory management over the last over the last few months, I will say. Um, we have seen shortages in a number of things, such as hand sanitizer, such as toilet paper, such as other consumables that, you know, we use in our day to day lives. So in in thinking about that, we're going to frame this discussion, you know, based on, let's say, toilet paper. And whenever we have toilet paper, there are different types and there are different inventory types that go into that roll of toilet paper that you pick up at your local grocery store, your local Walmart. And it begins with the raw materials. So the raw materials are essentially those, those goods that make up that finished good, which we'll get to shortly. So if we look at a simple roll of toilet paper, the raw material is going to be the pulp, you know, that makes the paper, that makes the core um, within within the, within the toilet tissue. Um, so, so that raw material is that paper pulp. And then also you would have, you can have components of that toilet, of that, <laughs> of that roll of toilet paper. So you could say the components could be the actual roll, you know, the cardboard roll itself. Okay. And once we get, once we have the, the paper, the toilet paper, the toilet tissue itself uh, processed, you know, from the raw paper pulp, once we have the, once we have the uh, uh, roll, you know, cardboard roll uh, created, then we have a we begin the process of creating a number of different rolls of toilet tissue, right? So we're creating cases of, of toilet tissue. We're creating hundreds of rolls of toilet tissue. So as we are producing those, those rolls of toilet tissue, that could be essentially what we refer to as work in process. Uh, so we are we are in the process of developing these hundreds of rolls of toilet tissue. And once we have finished those rolls, then we have what we refer to as finished goods. So now we have these stacks of toilet tissue as finished goods within our within our warehouse. And if you if you're if you're attending the call, please please put yourself on mute. So thank you. So as we have these stacks of toilet paper within our facility, now we can have all of this considered distribution inventory. And distribution inventory, if you think of, and I always equate this to Amazon. And, and this distribution inventory in Amazon would be where I would distribute these cases of toilet paper, these skids of toilet paper, across all grocery stores or across the United States, across all Walmarts across the United States. And that's essentially where I'll have all these finished goods that, are, that I distribute um, to my consumers, okay? So at a, at a high level, at a high level, you have the raw materials. So let's just, all right, so let's just use another example. So let's use an iPhone or a Samsung phone. So I have the raw materials for my iPhone. I have the screen. I have the I have the back. I have all of the CPUs that that go into my iPhone. 
you know. So I have the I have the raw materials. So the raw material could be the 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 materials that make up the glass. I could have all of the the raw materials that make up you know the back of the phone and things like that. And once I produce, once I take those raw materials and I create the screen, right, the, the glass screen, that glass screen can be considered a component. And because the iPhone is made up of literally thousands of parts, I would collect all those parts. And that would be when I start producing my iPhone. So that's work in progress pro process. Once I have produced all of these phones, I have finished goods. So I have hundreds, thousands of phones sitting in my Apple warehouse. And now I have to figure out where I'm going to distribute all those iPhones. So that's my distribution inventory. And then on, on another note, whenever I'm producing all these goods, it takes a number of different machines to make these, to make these parts. And for those machines to operate, I have maintenance, repair, and operating supplies. So that's the oil. That's all of the lubricant. That's all of the grease that, that go into um, keeping those machines operational. Now, the maintenance, repair, and operating supplies is probably one of the most overlooked uh, pieces of inventory. But I will say they're the most important piece of inventory. Because without my MRO supplies, if my machine goes down and I have to service my machine and I don't have those parts, my factory doesn't, my factory doesn't operate. My factory shut down, you know. So in, in, a, in a healthcare, so if you translate it to a healthcare environment, you could say that your maintenance, repair, and operating supplies can be your gloves. It can be, it can be your masks. So if I don't have gloves, I may not be able to serve my patients. So although those maintenance, repair, and operating supplies do not contribute to profitability for a hospital, they are essential. Because without them, I can't, I can't serve my patients. Okay. So maintenance, repair, and operating supplies is very important. So different types of inventory. So you'll see these different types of inventory. You'll see scenarios on the, on the assessment itself in that there are one, one type of inventory is what we refer to as anticipation inventory or seasonal inventory. I would say that, I will say that this anticipation inventory, I say, thank Christmas, thank, thank Thanksgiving, thanks, thank Halloween. You know, so you're going to see a a jump in the sale of turkeys, you know, during during October, November time frame, because that's seasonal inventory. You're going to see a jump in sales of televisions, you know, in November because of Black Friday. You know, so that's that's seasonal inventory. And you can somewhat you can somewhat forecast that in that you can look at previous you can look at previous years in that particular time frame and say okay we sold 10,000 televisions you know so we can increase that number by 10% and that's going to be our forecast as to what we are going to produce this year another another inventory type would be referred to as fluctuation inventory or safety stock so fluctuation inventory is is my buffer inventory. So I always say fluctuation inventory or safety stock is my buffer inventory. And and going back going back to the pandemic, you know, we we the whole buffer inventory safety stock inventory concept has changed. You know, in that we organizations look to have a lean mindset. So you'll you'll see the concept of lean six sigma within this class. And that is we try to we try to reduce our inventory levels. We try to reduce the amount of safety stock we have. But with the current situation, those safety stocks and those inventory levels were essentially decimated. You know, so so now organizations will be carrying higher levels of 
safety stock or buffer inventory for those consumable type items. So for hand sanitizer, for toilet tissue, um, for masks and things like masks and things like that. Okay. Um, another inventory type is we have a cycle stock or lot size. So I always say that lot size inventory can be equated to case quantities. So cases of sodas. So instead of buying an individual soda, our organizations will buy case quantities and those case quantities lead to quantity discounts and they also lead to they also lead to increased increased efficiencies from an inventory handling perspective that is also also from a inventory counting perspective so when we talk about uh cycle counts and we talk about uh periodic counts so we'll, 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 we'll discuss that in more detail so you also have a type of inventory referred to as pipeline inventory so pipeline inventory or transportation inventory I always say when we think of pipeline inventory think of think of fluid think of gas think of oil think of milk although this it is liquid it is still a value on that inventory there's still an inventory cost you still have to have an understanding of how many gallons of of oil i have how many gallons of milk i have you know although it's in a pipeline there is a inventory value on it there is a quantity associated with it um, speculative or hedge inventory is where we are we are guessing that there's going to be a supply chain disruption within our organization due to environmental factors so uh, labor strikes another one is another one that i experienced in in the industry is is a tariff so the Trump administration imposed a tariff on on lumber in Canada about two years ago. And although it was not put it, although they were discussing it at a given time, I had to work with a with a furniture manufacturer to say, OK, is it more cost effective to buy up this lumber from Canada and store it in an inventory, although we don't need it? Um, or wait for this tariff to be imposed and purchase it, purchase it when we need it. So we, after performing the simulations, after performing the calculations, it was more cost effective to buy up two years worth of lumber and store it in a factory, store it in one of their distribution centers, than for them to wait for this tariff to be imposed uh, to Canadian imported Canadian lumber. Okay. So, so again, a speculative hedge inventory. You are you are anticipating an event to occur. Um, so, a, a perfect example of speculative inventory is generators for hurricanes. You know, so we're speculating that the hurricanes will will knock out power. So now we're going to purchase uh, generators. You know, that's one that's one common practice for Home Depot and Lowe's. You know, in 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 the South. You know, in Florida. So they during hurricane season, uh, Lowe's and Home Depot they stock they stock up on generators. So that's just one example of that type of inventory. And then again, we talked about the maintenance, repair, and operating inventory. Again, within a hospital setting, you have the masks, you have the gloves, you have the vials and things like that. You know, in, in a in a manufacturing facility, you have the lubricants, you have the oil, and things of that nature. So with that maintenance, repair, and operating inventory. If you do not have that inventory, you will run the risk of not being able to serve your customers, not being able to produce product. So whenever we are counting inventory, so whenever we, the, one of the most important pieces to inventory management is ensuring the inventory accuracy of your own hand inventories of your products of your raw materials so there's two different approaches and periodic counting 
is referred to as a physical inventory. So if you have worked in the retail industry, if you work in the healthcare industry, if you work in a distribution industry, you probably have have been through the pain of a year in inventory or you or a loved one has experienced where they have to come in on New Year's Eve or a few days before uh, New Year's where they have to count all inventory within their facility within their warehouse, within the hospital. So that's where that period, that periodic counting comes into play where I have to do my end of year inventory to perform counts to ensure that my systems, my ERP systems, which you're talking about, which you'll, you'll, which you'll review in the management and planning section are accurate. Now, another approach is what we refer to as cycle counting. So cycle counts is where we where we select a subset of our inventory level of our inventory and we count it uh, daily, we count it weekly, we count it monthly, we count it quarterly. We're not counting the entire inventory set similar to what we do with a periodic count. We're counting a subset of our inventory with our cycle count. Okay. So just to to wrap up, so it's just going to be a short session. I want to leave. I'm going to leave time for questions. So we have a number of types of inventory where we have that raw material. So going back to our toilet paper for example, that's going to be that raw pulp uh, that that we have. And once we once we have that raw pulp, once we process it, once we manufacture it, then we begin to produce it, which is our work in process inventory. There is a value to that inventory. And once those those rolls of toilet paper have been produced, now there are there are finished goods inventory. Once we package up that finished goods inventory in our, our 12 pack Charmin's, you know, our case of Charmin, you know, now we have distribution inventory. Where that distribution inventory is distributed across Walmarts around the country. And then you also have the maintenance repair and operating inventory where you have to have that particular inventory to run your organization. So within a hospital, you have the mask, you have the gloves. Within a traditional facility, you have the lubricants, you have the oil, okay? And, and the overall concept of our cycle counts and our periodic counts is to ensure the accuracy of our inventory um, not only to know what our costs are from an operational perspective, but also to ensure that our ERP systems are accurate. You know, as when customer service goes in the ERP system and a customer inquires about how many of a particular item you have in inventory, that number is accurate. Okay. As opposed to as opposed to being inaccurate, and now we cut, we have an issue, and now that leads to a a a negative negative customer satisfaction. So that is a, a, a high level overview of Chapter Twelve, of uh, which which is is a summary of, um, or include is included within the supply chain management area of the assessment. Um, all right, so I'm going through. I'm going through the discussions now. So Tammy, so Tammy, the difference between finished goods and distribution goods. So finished goods would be, would be, so with toilet paper, it's going to be my thousands of rolls of toilet paper that I have already produced, right? But I haven't packaged them yet. Uh, within the iPhone, with the iPhone example, it's going to be my finished iPhones that I have produced. I haven't packaged them up yet. I haven't put them in the, in the, in my in my iPhone boxes yet. I haven't put those those thousand those hundreds of iPhones uh, that are boxed up on pallets yet to put on trucks and send to distribution centers around the world. You know, so so the finished goods is they're produced. But they're not packaged. That's the way. That's the way that that I can I can I can equate it. Um, so does that help? 
slide five, slide five. All right. So there's slide five. Is it, can you see that? I don't want to put it in presentation mode because then I. Uh, I lose, I lose the chat. Okay. So any, in terms of supply chain management, are there any, are there any other questions? Because that is that you're going to see quite a few questions to uh, quite a few situational questions in terms of the inventory types. You're going to see it. You, you're going to see a few questions on the um, inventory record accuracy types. Uh, so you're going to have to know the difference between periodic counting and cycle counting. Um, so if there are any other questions, uh, please let me know. Please put it in the chat. I'll stay in this chat. Uh, also, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me via email and you can also schedule an appointment. So cycle counting can just done be done during during holidays. Cycle counting can be done at any given time. Uh, it is so so from my experience, periodic counting are are is done typically at the at the at the end of that organization's year. I say at the end of organization's year because not every organization has a calendar year. You know, some organizations will have a year end in July, for example. You know, so they'll do that periodic full physical inventory in July, but the majority of organizations will be doing will be doing their their physical inventory or their periodic count at the end in, at the at the end of December. But to answer your question, Andrew, you can do cycle counts throughout the year. You can do the cycle counts at any given time. Now, organizations will actually do more cycle counts and do away with a physical inventory because they perform cycle counts so often. My, uh, large organizations like Amazon, they have they have they have cycle counters where their their only job is to perform cycle counts. So so and and also Amazon is so large that they could not feasibly do a year in inventory count across all of their distribution centers so their their primary approach is a cycle count you know so so whether you do a periodic count or you do a cycle count whether you do a common because most company realistically most companies do a combination of both um so 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 it, it it depends it depends on the organization it depends on on the situation it depends on on the it depends on how large your inventory, how large your inventory is. All right, Diana, let's see here, give me a second. Let me get here. So, yeah, so, Je yeah, Julie, I'll, I'll send these, I'll send these slides. Well, actually, these slides, if you go into, so this is for everyone. So, if you go into Wally Plus and you go into, Chapter 12. If you go into study aids, these PowerPoints are within within Wally Plus. It's highly suggested that you pull you review the PowerPoints for every single chapter within Wally Plus. A lot of people have found these 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 PowerPoints to be very helpful. And I would say that if these are these PowerPoints are the most beneficial the most beneficial supplemental tool outside of the reading to be successful in a class. Uh, so let's see here, Diana, what's the difference between lot size and, and cycle stock? All right, so yeah, so lot size and cycle stock. Whenever you think of lot size and cycle stock, think of Think of Sam's Club. Think of BJ's. So whenever you have these large quantities of inventory, so when I when I'm buying when I'm buying ketchup by the case, when I'm buying 
when I'm buying 30 packs of toilet tissue. You know, think try to try to amplify that from an organizational perspective where 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 Walmart or Sam's Club is buying 500 30 pack cases from Charmin. Because they're buying so many, so such a large quantity, they're getting quantity breaks from from GlaxoSmithKline, from Procter and Gamble. So that cycle, that that lot size and cycle stock is you're increasing the the quantity, you know, of the individual items you're purchasing to get those quantity breaks. Um, so so. It assists, it gives you those quantity breaks. It also assists in in effectively counting your inventory. Because instead of me saying, okay, I have I have 50,000 rolls of toilet tissue, I have 50 cases of toilet tissue. And if I want to convert those quantities down to each's, it's a click of a button. Right. So so that lot, those lot sizes are, are very important when we talk about operations management. Um, so, for example, you're not going to say, oh, I have 50,000. I have 50,000 pairs of gloves in my inventory, in my hospital inventory. No, you're going to say I have 50 cases of gloves in my hospital inventory. You know, so that's where that lot size comes into play. Any other questions? All right, so that's going to conclude today's today's discussion. Once again, if you have any questions, please reach out and let me know. Have a great week. Stay safe.